Running total, please. Sweet. So Cannon, Cannon and others go three out of four each. Oh. And Nick on. Four out of four, guys. Oh. Oh. So there is only one point separating all of you. It's other. First spot, followed by Cannon and then Nikon. Nikon catching up. Cannon <laughs> really is just a step. But look, the, 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 the one of the next two topics is focal length is very important. Uh, bearing in mind that the lenses we have are 16 to 35, which we take most of our wide angle landscape at. Uh, we have a mid range zoom 24 to 70. And what I like to think about that is taking stuff which you can really see with the naked eye, so not much perspective distortion or changes of planes and so forth. And then we have a 7200 and a 2 times extender, uh, not only for wildlife, but for properties of longer length photography, which I will discuss before we get to... But before that, we'll go to the actual questions. So this was taken from On the focus side. Do you drift your focal point away, or do you focus and then recompose? With the or do you keep it in with composition? With the 5D Mark III, because of the excellent autofocus, I actually use the autofocus points while I'm there. Yeah, uh, but uh, with the 5D Mark II, turning it just kind of takes it to random spots. So then I'll just use center point and just focus and recompose. Re so but this... With the landscape photography, um, you probably don't, don't do that a lot. Yeah. You probably use the live, the live view very often, pick a point, and then manually focus. Yeah, that, uh, for, for this shot it was handheld, but if we were to have it mounted on a tripod, we would usually be using live view, as Marion said. Okay. So, um, as a, this introductory picture hopefully is a slight clue. Uh, it was taken with the 70 to 200 uh, lens, and it was taken from the roadside. Now, those trees were probably about 50 metres away, and those mountains in the distance are kilometres and kilometres away. So. I'll talk about the properties of uh, different focal lengths, but that's a clue. So this was taken at Iceland, uh, just outside the gates of Thorsmork Mountain Reserve, which is home to the volcano of the unpronounceable name that erupted in 2010. Um, and this, Marian spotted this barn way off in the distance. So what focal length do you think that was taken at? John so the next, this one was taken um, on our more recent trip. Oh, what's that, sorry? Oh, this was taken at uh, Gunya Dunes in uh, Cotton Bay National Park in Air Peninsula. It was a pretty blustery evening, but the light was superb. And on my back was a little one blinking. Oh. Okay. Um, this image was also taken in Iceland. Um, it was taken in a place called Breidavik, which means golden sand uh, beach in uh, northwest of Iceland. It's nearest to a spot where we had planned to take pictures of puffins, but the puffins were out to sea, so we went driving around and fortu fortuitously, one of the things Iceland is famous for is just blustery wind and completely changeable weather. So you get great opportunities for taking uh, patchy light type of images. And just have to, it was only a matter of time before a patch of light hit the church, so that's what we're waiting for. Did you have any syndrome? I can't get the answer. <laughs> 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 Thank um, this, this last picture is also taken in Iceland. It's an emergency shelter in a very remote part of Iceland that for nine months of the year is not accessible uh, because it's completely snowed under. But in summer, it becomes accessible only by four-wheel drive. And in the background, a massive glacier. So who lives in, who lives in that house? In Iceland. Oh, no one. It's an emergency shelter. Oh, yeah. There is a hiking path that goes through that, that area. Uh, but as far as I know, I think it's Is this your first trip or second? The second trip. I was, I was going to say, could it be in New York or something? In where's that? New York. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so I'm going to try and simplify the local length into some rules of thumb. If I'm shooting, if I'm shooting wide, I'm just using the 1635 f2.8 lens. And what you get with a, what, what you get with a, a wide angle lens is that you're emphasizing depth. So um, if you've got something in the foreground, the background looks very, very distant. And one of the best examples I can think of this is before our first trip to Tasmania, we've seen heaps of beautiful pictures of Cradle Mountain. 
And one of the classic compositions you've probably all seen is that there's a set of rocks in the foreground of the water in Dub Lake and then Cradle Mountain in the distance. And if you've never been there before, um, what you might think is that Cradle Mountain is ages away because it looks fairly small in all those styles of pictures. But then when we first got there, we were like, oh, Cradle Mountain's huge. It's kind of like looming almost in front of you. So that's um, one of the advantages and disadvantages of using a wide-angle lens. What it can do, do is emphasise depth, so you have something in the foreground with some leading into a background object of interest, and that's the style of composition most people use for wide-angle photography. But you can you run the risk of minimising the background, so it becomes less important, and that may work to your advantage if it's particularly large, or work, may work to your disadvantage if the background object of interest is already quite small. So emphasising depth is my main point for the wide angle. Uh, in terms of using a very long focal length, uh, the properties of this are that I think it emphasises scale and it compresses planes. And what I mean by that is if um, you want to take a picture to emphasise the size of a waterfall, what I would do is stand way back, get a long lens, have someone stand at the bottom of it and take it at a very long focal length. Because what you're going to get is that even if the person is a few hundred metres away from the waterfall, from that compression of planes from the long focal length, it looks as though they're standing right underneath it. So that waterfall looks immense all of a sudden because there's no kind of depth. So you lose your depth in the picture. So that's um, the advantage and disadvantage. If you're using a very long focal length, depth is kind of eliminated, but it's to your advantage because you can show massive scale of, of various objects, which was one of the options in the question. Um, but uh, we like to use filters a lot. And if you're using a very long focal length, be aware that the grad line can be very thick for a long focal length. So you have to be very careful if you're going to try using filters. And I would recommend use the um, depth and preview button if you're going to do it for a long focal length. Um, and lastly, in between the two, kind of mid-range focal length, is the kind of stuff that you can see with the naked eye and it's just framed appropriately of how you want to actually present the picture. So say a 50mm lens is probably the best example of doing that. So, uh, just going back to the quiz, this image was actually taken at 135 millimetres or so. So, quite a fairly long focal length, but not super long. And the reason I say that is, even though it doesn't look, you know, you still feel as though the mountains are a fair way distant from the back. It's not like the house is right up against the mountains. So, there isn't that much compression of planes. And neither is it kind of so, di everything looks distant, doesn't it? It doesn't look as though something really close up and something mid-ground, something background. So it's certainly not a wide focal length. So this is kind of a longish focal length. For me, one of the giveaways was the planet. Yeah, yeah. If you, if you have a... Because um, that could almost be wide without the cloud of the white dust. Yeah. Um, now, this is an example of um, a, a wide angle type of composition where you've got something of interest in the foreground, um, the tree and the dunes, with the patterns leading into the background, which is the sky on the top of the dune. Um, I think uh, one of the caveats with shooting at a wide angle with this type of photograph is that people feel compelled to put something of interest in the foreground, and if it just happens to be this ugly looking rock because you're trying to achieve that composition, then that's actually going to be the focus of your picture, and it's not going to look great. Um, the other thing that's important is the mid-ground leading to the background and that's where slight changes in height change your perspective completely. So if you're too high, uh, you're going to get uh, a lot of mid-ground and maybe not enough sky at the top and maybe not enough interest in that mid-ground. If you're too low, so I don't actually think low is necessarily better, if you're too low then what happens is you get the immediate object, hardly any mid-ground and then sky. So you don't have the same kind of leading. So with any given scene, um, when you're using a wide angle, uh, the foreground, mid-ground, background is important, but particularly the, the height of your camera and where it's pointing as well. That's the main emphasis for uh, using a wider type of um, composition. What was that one? What was it? Oh, sorry, that was 16. That was taken at 16 millimetres. Yeah. Uh, now this one, this was actually taken at, um, well, it was 35 millimetres on a non-full-frame camera, so it was about 50 millimetres uh, on a full frame. And the reason why this is, uh, uh, I don't think it's a good example of a very long focal length is there is still some separation between the church and the mountain in the distance. If you wanted to try taking this with the mountain looking huge, you have to find a spot way, 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 way back. So you take the church and just the mountain immediately above it with nothing in between. So that's when you try to compress the planes to, in order to get the cliff looking huge and the church small. But that wasn't the type of image we were after. So 
it was taken with 24 to 70 lengths at 35 mils. And this one, as I mentioned, that glacier, I didn't say before, but that glacier is actually about three kilometres behind. Um, and I was probably about a kilometre from that house. Um, so it was on private property, so I couldn't just waltz in. Well, I could have, but I don't like to do that. Um, and so this was actually taken with a 7200 with an extender on. Uh, so it was about, from memory, uh, 350 millimetres uh, focal length. And that's the main thing. Uh, the planes are compressed. So there is a lack of apparent depth in the picture, and the ice, the glacier looks enormous in the background. Yes. Whereas if we took this with a wide angle from far away, the glacier would just be this tiny thing on the horizon. How, how heavy is your bag when you go away? Uh, well, it usually exceeds what's uh, meant to go on the plane. <laughs> but it, it's a quite a small bag, so I we get away with it. Do you, um, do you ever hesitate to use the, is it a two times? Yes, yeah. Does it work well? Do you hesitate to put it on? Um, look, uh, in terms of uh, wildlife photography, uh, I found it can slow things down. I was trying to take uh, pictures of penguins down at Kura Bay, New Zealand in low light, and I had to use uh, you know, f5.6 and the focusing wasn't quite as good and so forth. So for that style, yes, but, but for this one I was using light view as well. So it, it was really all about the focal length and everything else could be controlled for. I think you actually lose a stop with extending. Yeah, you do, you do. So if it's two times, yeah. then your, if your lens is f2.8, it goes up to 5.6. If you use a 1.4, f2.8 goes to f4 as your minimum. So that, you, you actually lose the ability to uh, get a very fast shutter. So that's about 400 Yeah, almost 400 mils. All right, we have a running tally. Yes, yes we do. Oh. Um, <laughs> I come down to the last section. No, no well, it may, it may not. Others uh, scored two out of four. Uh, Cannon scored uh, one out of four. Oh, no. And uh, Nikon. Sorry, guys. Not you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 